Hey, Mitch from Cherry Audio. In this video, we're going to talk about how to synchronize the Cherry MRB 960 sequencer to a DAW project. If we look at the top row here, I've made a super simple patch. It's just an oscillator outputting a triangle wave into a VCA. And then we've got this envelope generator over here with its output controlling the curve of the VCA. Then I've got a second VCA here, but that's not really important to the sound itself. We'll talk about that later. And so this super simple sound is going to get controlled by the 960 sequencer. So typically when you would use the 960 on its own, you would use its own internal clock, which they call an oscillator. And you could turn that on and you can see it starts moving at whatever rate we've selected here. But this clock is not externally synchronizable. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to externally clock it. So we're going to leave the onboard clock slash oscillator turned off. And we're going to use this sync divider clock output as the external clock. And the way we're going to do that is by using the sync out in the transport section of the I.O. panel. This outputs a sync signal, which is a 96 pulse per quarter note signal, which gets routed to the sync in here. And the sync divider divides this up into musically useful values, in this case an eighth note. And you can see that it's flashing at an eighth note at 120 beats per minute, which is our project tempo. The next thing we want to do is patch a cable from the transport play output to the sync divider reset in. And the reason for this is because the sync signal doesn't know where the downbeat is. It just runs continuously at the same tempo as the project. So without resetting the sync divider, here's what can happen. You could hit play and it might start playing here or here. And what we want is for it to start playing here so everything's right on the one. So patching a cable from the I.O. play output to the sync divider reset in guarantees that we always start right here exactly on the downbeat and everything's in sync. So now I'm going to patch a cable from the clock out over to the shift CV input. And you can see as soon as I do that, it starts moving. So if I manually open up our VCAs, you can hear the pitches playing. So what's missing from our equation now is that the clock signal also needs to be routed to the envelope generator so that it will articulate the VCAs at eighth note intervals. Now I could just take the clock signal and route it to the gate input, but as you can hear, nothing's happening when I do that. And the reason why nothing is happening when I do that is because this clock out signal is very, very brief. So the envelope generator is only getting pulsed for an instant, so you're not hearing anything. So the way we get around that is we take the clock signal and we route it to a trigger to gate converter. And the trigger to gate converter has the ability to take very, very short signals and extend them to whatever we set them with with the gate length knob here. So now if I open up the VCA, which is acting as our master gate here, now the eighth notes are gating the envelope generator and I can adjust the gate length here. But really we probably want to just adjust our times with the envelope generator itself. So now if I hit play on my DAW, it plays in time. And you might have also noticed that it resets to one as soon as I hit play. And let me show you how I did that. All of the injects beneath each stage allow you to use a CV to instantly jump to that stage. So what I've done is I've taken the play output, which outputs a pulse when I hit play in the DAW, and I've routed that to step eight. Now, why did I route it to step eight if I wanted to start at step one? You'd think you'd want to route the play trigger to reset to step one, but when you hit play, it would actually start on step two. Why is that? Because our clock output over here is telling it to jump to the next stage on every eighth note. So if I have the IO panel transport play output routed to step one, we are jumping to step one and telling it to jump to the next step at the exact same time. So what happens is it instantly jumps to step two when I hit play. What we want to do is route it to step eight because that way, when I hit play, the play trigger tells it to jump to step eight immediately, and it jumps to the next step immediately, which is step one. So when I hit play, step one. Now, of course, the other thing we want to be able to do is hit a MIDI key and have the sequence be heard, and then let go of the MIDI key and have the sequence stop. Now, my examples before, I was just opening up this VCA and it just played indefinitely. And that's not so great because you want to be able to press a key on the keyboard and have it play and let go of the key and have it stop playing. And that way you can record many notes in your DAW and everyone's happy. So how do we do that? That's what this second VCA over here is being used for. It acts as a sort of master on-off switch for the whole mess. I'm taking the output 
of the VCA over here going directly into the input over here, output from the second VCA into the master out. And the control input is coming from the gate output and CV sources. So if I press a key, it's opening up this VCA. And if I let go, it's closing it. Here I'm hitting a key. I'm letting go of a key. Now all the while the sequencer is running, you're just not hearing it. But the beauty of it is the sequencer is running in time with our project. And if I hit play, it's always going to jump to step one and be in time. And if I press a key on the keyboard, it just catches it wherever it is. It's not resetting anything. So it's always in time. There's just one other scenario we haven't accounted for. And that is when the DAW is playing and I hit a key on the keyboard, it catches the sequencer at, at whatever stage it's currently at. I'm going to let go of the key, hit it again. Now ideally we'd want to be able to hit the key and have it start the sequence at step one. All we need to do is route a gate or a trigger signal to the step eight CV input. So now when I hit a key, it's going to jump to step eight, but because of the clock signal going to the shift input, it's going to immediately jump to step one. So let's try that out. I'm going to hit a key now. Hit a key again. And it works great. Technically, it might be off for an instant, but it happens so fast that you would never know, and it works perfectly in practice. Now, in addition to the sequencer pitch CV, I've also patched the I.O. panel pitch CV into the oscillator, and that way we can control the oscillator with the sequencer, and we can transpose it using the keyboard. Now, as an aside, there are certainly ways to set up the patch so that the sequencer will stop running when you press stop on your DAW or when you let go of keys, but it really won't hurt anything to run it this way. You're definitely not going to shorten the life of the light bulbs, and uh, as long as you know that it's resetting and playing in time when you start your DAW, then you can let it run all the time.